Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing the concept of atrophy. Now, if you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because your support really means a lot to us and it allows us to continue making these videos, these educational videos free of charge. So with that being said, let's discuss atrophy by reviewing cellular adaptations. So if you haven't seen our previous video, we talked about cellular adaptations, mainly the fact that your cells are constantly under a lot of stress, mainly because of the environment that they're in. One example of this would be the stomach lining. Our stomach lining is a very harmful environment because it is a very acidic environment and because of that reason it's hard for the cells to survive now at the cellular level even though they're all constantly being stressed out our organs are generally under a state of homeostasis now these things can change our organs and our cells can change to, uh, based off of the type and the severity of the stress that's placed upon them they will eventually grow when they're under a lot of stress. And there are two types of growth adaptations. The first one is hypertrophy. The second one is hyperplasia, both of which we have discussed in our previous video. Now, the thing is, once an organ grows, it's doing so because of the stress that's being placed under it. But when you take away the stress that is being put upon an organ, you need to reverse that growth because we can't be walking around with hypertrophic and hyperplastic uh, organs. So there is a mechanism in our body built in to prevent that. And the way it happens or the way we reverse the hypertrophy and hyperplasia is through atrophy. Atrophy actually allows for homeostasis right here. When you have increase in stress, right, you will grow in size. But when you reduce the stress afterwards, you have to go through atrophy. There you go. Okay, so with that being said, let's discuss atrophy. Atrophy is essentially the physiologic process of reabsorption and breaking down of the tissue. It involves apoptosis, and that's a very high yield fact to remember. Apoptosis is one way we can go undergo atrophy. Now, why does atrophy happen? Essentially, when you decrease the stress that's being put on an organ, that organ has to go through atrophy. That organ has to go back in size because there is a lack of need to grow. There is no more uh, stimulus to go through hyperplasia and hypertrophy. And because that's not happening, you have to reverse the growth and you go through atrophy. So there are two main processes of atrophy, just like you have two main processes of cellular growth. The first one is going to be decreased in the size of the cells, which would be the opposite of hypertrophy. And there, the second one is, you guessed it, the decrease in the number of cells, which is the opposite of hyperplasia. So if you guys need a review on hypertrophy and hyperplasia, I highly recommend you check those out. Check those, check that video out. So let's talk about the mechanism of atrophy. Essentially, when you need to decrease the size of the cell, AKA when you need to undergo uh, uh, the opposite of hypertrophy, you are going to use the ubiquitin proteasome pathway. Okay, the ubiquitin proteasome degradation pathway and autophagy. So what happens is ubiquitin is going to bind to the intermediate filaments in the cytoskeleton. When it does that, a proteasome is then going to recognize ubiquitin. When it recognizes ubiquitin, it knows to destroy the skeleton of that cell. Once the skeleton, the cytoskeleton is destroyed, you are going to start seeing organelle autophagy, aka via lysosomes, in order to destroy the organelles that are present. This is a very simple pathway, but you need to understand it because this is one of the ways we counteract hypertrophy. Now, this is just hypertrophy in the realm of decreasing the size of the cell. What about decreasing the number of cells? Essentially, this is going to happen through apoptosis, okay? In apoptosis, you are going to destroy the cells through programmed cell death, okay? And you might have heard that apoptosis usually happens when the cell is not functioning properly or when it's damaged. And that is true. Our bodies know to destroy a cell when it's not functioning properly or is damaged. But our bodies also know to reverse hypertrophy, or sorry, hyperplasia by go undergoing uh, atrophy via apoptosis. That's very important because that's the only way you can get rid of the number of cells. You cannot resorb them back into the stem cell stage. You can't reverse it, unlike you know the uh, mechanism of hypertrophy, which is reversible. 
So that is basically the concept of atrophy in a nutshell, essentially everything you need to know for your exams. But we're going to discuss two more concepts right now that kind of fall in the realm of atrophy. And those are aplasia and hypoplasia. Aplasia is a birth defect where an organ or tissue is completely or wholly absent. It does not exist. Now, this occurs because of a failure of the cells to develop during embryogenesis. During the part where the, the embryo is being created, essentially, okay, uh, those cells don't really exist, they don't develop properly, and you don't get that whole organ tissue present at all, meaning it's not there whatsoever. One example of this would be renal agenesis. In renal agenesis, one or two of the kidneys are not present. They're just not there. So that means the individual or the, the child that's born does not have one or both kidneys. That's not an issue with the growth of the kidney. It's an issue with the, the, the uh, proper location or the development of the cells that will then lead to the, the kidney that is missing or that is not present. Okay, so that's the concept of aplasia. Aplasia essentially is complete. Okay, it's a complete absence. Hypoplasia is an underdevelopment or an incomplete development of a tissue or an organ. So aplasia is complete under complete absence. Hypoplasia is incomplete. Incomplete, or I guess I would say partial. All right, so this occurs because of a decrease in cell production during embryogenesis, not development, not cells developing at all, but a, a lower amount of cells being produced. Often this leads to a small and malfunctioning organ. The reason why it ends up malfunctioning is because because of the size, you do need to have a certain amount of cells present to be able to function properly. When you have hypoplasia occurring, those organs can't function to their fullest extent, and they're not really able to do the job they need to do. One example of this would be thymus hypoplasia in DeGeorge syndrome. In DeGeorge syndrome, the thymus is present, but it's very small, and the thymic shadow will not be very, um, very distinct on an x-ray. So that is an example of hypoplasia. So in this case, you are going to have incomplete, incomplete development. And that's mainly it for aplasia and hypoplasia. Now, obviously, the concepts of what you know what happens because of hypoplasia and aplasia are specific to the organ system you're discussing, which we'll get into later. But for now, this is the entire uh, you know knowledge base you need to know for atrophy, aplasia, and hypoplasia. I hope you found this video educational and helpful. If you did, consider subscribing to our channel because your support really means a lot to us. If you like this content and you want to see more content like this, go to our website at www.madmedicine.org where you can find more educational content for your exam prep free of charge. Thank you.